Last week, the House of Representatives debated their omnibus education finance bill and by a vote of 75 to 54, approved $273 million in new education spending, adding one and a quarter percent to the per pupil funding formula. Joining me in the studio to discuss the House plan is the chair of the House Education Finance Committee, Representative Jennifer Loon. Welcome. Thank you. How will the House plan address the achievement gap between students of color and white students in Minnesota? Well, first of all, we put most of our money into the per pupil formula. So that's money that goes to every student, every school district across the state. And I think it's important, first of all, that our schools have a stable source of funding, and that is the formula. So uh, the vast majority of our resources are put there. Second of all, uh, we are trying something a little bit different with compensatory revenue. This is money that goes to schools for the number of students they have uh, from families that qualify for free or reduced lunch, so lower income families. And we are asking them to take their new compensatory money for this uh, coming biennium and use that in extended time program. So after school, summer school, before school programs, um, anything that would direct additional time for those students who need more, more help. Uh, we know from studies that that is a strategy that works, and that's what we're going to try to invest in this year. The uh, Governor Dayton, his plan recommends $700 million in new spending, a 2% per pupil funding increase. Your plan is 273, one and a quarter. In a time of budget surplus, Democrats are arguing that your plan isn't going far enough in terms of funding. How do you respond? Well, there's always a struggle for how much we can spend in any area of the budget. And clearly, education is one where Minnesota does prioritize and invest. It's the biggest portion of our state's budget, 42%. So 42 cents out of every dollar that a state taxpayer sends goes to early education through grade 12 in Minnesota. Um, I do think as we move through this process and uh, compromises are made that we will have probably more money than in the House bill right now for education. And I do feel very confident that we'll get to that 2% increase each year in the formula. Uh, but much of the governor's increased spending is in other areas, um, uh, voluntary preschool programs and some other things. So we'll probably have a little more discussion about how much we'll invest in those areas. Well, and speaking of the voluntary pre-K, um, your plan would put money in early education scholarships. Economists uh, say that investments in early learning pay off you know, in, in the long term, so it's a good investment. In terms of your program, Commissioner Caselius has said that you know, some of the school readiness programs that may become involved won't align well with state learning goals, and they also don't require licensed teachers. So that's some of her concerns with, with your plan. How, do you, how would you address those concerns? Well, I would be very open to putting more uh, requirements into the school readiness programs. Uh, right now, there's a great deal of flexibility for school districts and how they develop their programs, but they do all have to have a plan that has to be approved by the commissioner. So if the commissioner feels there should be more stringency to that, she could certainly require that on her own as well. Um, I think the important thing to remember is that if we're going to invest in very young children to help them be ready for kindergarten, you get the greatest return on taxpayer dollars by targeting that to the children at highest risk of falling into the achievement gap, and that is low-income students. And by creating a scholarship program that goes after those kids first, make sure that they have quality early childhood, that's how we really um, make strides towards closing that achievement gap at a very early age. How would parents apply for this scholarship program? Well, the scholarship programs are up and running now, um, so we have school readiness, which you can go and apply just at your school district, and, and schools operate those uh, programs for three and four-year-olds uh, at a sliding fee basis, so they're free for uh, low-income three and four-year-olds, and, and there may be a, a small tuition for families of greater economic means. Um, scholarships are uh, distributed through um, contracted entities. The Department of Education contracts with providers uh, think small is one in the um, Twin Cities metro area, and they apply. Uh, there's a, an application form that verifies income, and then you're provided information on high-rated, parent-aware rated uh, programs in your area, and then a parent can choose whatever works best for them. It may be uh, a family uh, home care, daycare provider, it may be center-based, it may be a school-based program, um, any range of providers as long as they're quality.
Okay. Um, the entire state, but particularly smaller communities right now in greater Minnesota are having trouble hiring teachers. So how does the House plan address this teacher shortage? It is a very uh, important issue for us to grapple with. It's really moved from a concern uh, more even into a crisis area in many parts of Minnesota. So the crisis and the shortage is really, uh, it, it's got a number of factors to it. One is geographic, and in some areas of greater Minnesota, uh, they just can't attract teacher candidates uh, for the openings that they have. Uh, in other instances, it's certain types of licensure that we're very short uh, on teachers in. Science and math Science and special education. and special ed, exactly. Yes. Um, and then we're also trying to make sure that our teacher ranks really uh, more closely reflect the students that we're educating in our schools. And uh, we're 30% we're or more diverse in, in our classrooms, uh, students of color, but our teaching ranks is only about 4%. And so we're trying to encourage uh, more people of color to go into the field of teaching. Um, it's great to have them as role models in our schools. So. We're trying to tackle all of those things, and we do it with a variety of things. Um, uh, student loan forgiveness uh, mm -hmm. for people that get into the field. We also have some grants for people doing their student teaching because you often, you cannot have a job while you're student teaching, and for some uh, students that is just not uh, a, a, a possibility yeah. uh, that they have to work while they're in college and getting their, their degree, so we have some grants for that. Uh, just a number of other things to try to help uh, encourage that and build a stronger pipeline of people going into the teaching profession. Representative Loon, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Thank you.